We are still speaking from the place of the prophetic words from, Jer from Nehemiah, where we said, yes, there were a time, and we believe it will not be so that in my life anymore that we don't put in the effort to hear what he is saying. And that's where Paul said to the church, I cannot share with you the deep things because you are not committing yourself to try and understand what I am saying to you. May Holy Spirit guide you and guide me that we will get into the Word in such a way, not for a quick fix, no, but to find the depth of the riches of the glory of the knowledge of who he really is in Jesus name no religious demon to take us away from a understanding of the preciousness of his word amen let it be so in Jesus name and then we said further okay we see that the foundations of the church the, the elementary teachings must be laid in our lives. We talked about repentance from dead works. We talked about faith to get out of the rubbish, faith to overcome the world, faith that pleases God, faith and we with righteous will walk by faith. Then we talked about identity. We find baptism in water, baptism in the Holy Spirit, baptism in Christ, baptism in fire, where we are found in Him. And from that place that we are sent out, the teaching of laying on of hands, be sent out with the hand of God, the Holy Spirit on our lives, the anointing to be sent out there. Hello? And the teaching about the resurrection of the dead, that we are in a resurrected life, that we can experience the one, the Holy Spirit, that raised Christ from the dead. How much more will He quicken our bodies, mortal bodies to live for Him? Amen. But then also of eternal judgment, and that today I will allow the Word to judge my flesh, Allow the word to deal with that what is rubbish so that tomorrow I will not build as a foolish builder on sand. That I will not build in foolishness but in wisdom as a wise builder because I allowed the word to bring light on that what I'm doing, what I'm saying, what I'm planning. May God help us all. Amen. So that as, as foundational teachings in our lives so that through the context, the picture that we see in Nehemiah, through the book Nehemiah, that it's all about the understanding and how to build the walls. We find that the new Jerusalem will come from heaven. And the word Jerusalem, that means the, the habitation of peace. There where peace dwells. Hallelujah. Where peace dwells. And that is not a peace, is, that peace is not a ceasefire. That peace is a harmony between you and God. That peace has to do with a harmony, a, a precious relationship between you and God, you and yourself, you and people around you. Because God said there will be a, a principle, there will be a concept of relating, relationship. He said, I want to have this concept with mankind. Are you with me? I know there's a tractor making a noise somewhere still. But um, God will help us to deal with that sometime. Amen. Hallelujah. Where are we now? Thank you. Okay, and the rest? You heard nothing. Thanks. Must I start over? Good. Where are we now? In the, in the New Jerusalem... It's a habitation of peace. That's where you and God, you have your time. You, have, you are living together in life, I can say like that. That's the place where I dwell with Him. I must walk with Him and I must understand how to walk with my God. I must understand how to live with Him. And then I need to understand how to work with Him. And for that, and in that context, I need to build the Jerusalem walls of where it is me and God living 
and being together and walking together. And where is it outside the walls where I'm only on a mission, on a mission to understand there at your workplace, yes, you're there on a mission. You need to get out of that walls into the world, into the place where, where hell wants to rule, where hell wants to devour and destroy nations. You need to get out of into that place, but only if you understand your mandate. When God has sent you as ambassadors of Christ, co-workers of Christ, salt of the earth, light of the world, letter of Christ, trophy of his victory, amen, fragrance of Christ, so you are sent out there. But if you haven't built quality in you, what do you want to show the world? That it is fake, that it is not worth serving Christ. Well, what are you going to show out there? Because you are the Bible that they will read. May God help us. But my brother, my sister, when we talk about the walls, you need to build some walls in your life so that you understand the definition of where to be with him and where to walk with him and where to work with him. Amen. And that is only if you take these building stones through the Holy Spirit so that you can build that, lay that stone accurately. Love, peace, where the joy, righteousness, Victory, how must I lay all those building blocks accurately to understand the wall that needs to be built in my life? Because if I'm not going to build with the Holy Spirit through the Word of God, without you choosing the opposite, it, it will happen. By not choosing to build with the Spirit through the Word, the enemy will see that as you chose then, that through some other spirit you will build strongholds, strongholds, that according to 2 Corinthians need to be broken down through the word. That's walls that you built that must be broken down because that stand against the knowledge of God, against relationship, against the word of God. And that will be built. So what I have as a word, why I'm stressed with that word of stress, I will build with that word, this stress wall. Hello. With that fear, with that compromise, with that lying, with that success as a, as a security, with that failure that I feel condemned, with that superiority, inferiority, religion, with all of that, the enemy will build, if you like it or not. If you don't choose to build with the Holy Spirit through the Word, you are choosing that some other spirit will build with the rest of the words and the thoughts and the thought patterns in you. He will build a wall. Somebody is building with some other word in you. That is it. It's, it, it's, a, it's like you don't choose. Don't I choose? I choose. No, it's, it's, you are breathing. As long as you are here, you are breathing. Are you with me? Your heart is to do, to do. But if, as long as you are here, something is going to happen. It's going to be built through some words with some demonic spirit, or it's going to be built with a word and the Holy Spirit. And if I cannot build that, then you know, I don't know where must I. Just be with God. Where must I work with Him? Where is, where is there a boundary? So I make a home. I feel okay when I listen to all this rubbish music. I feel okay if I can watch whatever. I feel okay to entertain whatever demonic, judgmental religion thoughts. I feel okay if... And I can be with that. I can have fellowship with those type of thoughts, those type of lifestyle. So I have a home there, and I have a home here. But if I build with the word, the walls, I will know this side. And with God, this is where I live. This is where I, I call home with God. And this is where I work out there. Jesus said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. But they are not from this world. They are from here. Hello. They are from you. But as you've sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. Are you with me, my brother, my sister? But it can just be confusion if you don't understand how to build the wall. 
And you try and live there, you try and live here, try and work in the house where you're not supposed to be in performance in, in Jerusalem, in the new Jerusalem that will come from heaven. But that we are busy in our lives, understand the borders. But the new Jerusalem, according to the word in Revelation, will come down and will be established on the Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the place where he dwells. It's the place where he's alone is worshipped. Zion as a platform must be established in your heart. Zion as a platform must be established in this family, must be established in the nations. Zion as a platform, on the platform of God is honored, doesn't matter what. I will worship him if I feel not like it, or if I feel like it, if, I, if my thoughts, um, if I'm muff, I don't know what's that in English, or if I'm lekker. There's no English word for that. Doesn't matter where I'm in my, God is worthy, that's it. So I will open my mouth from my spirit, I will worship him. That is a platform established in your life. And that is like in that platform of Mount Zion, the new Jerusalem will come down. I know it's all about in that one day, yes, at the end of everything, it will happen. But in that principle, in that concept, even today, that principle must work in me. It must work among us. So we can, you and four friends can talk rubbish. You can, you can gossip. You can talk negatively. You can talk uh, judgmentally. You can talk religion. And you establish that platform among you four. That that demon of religion will be on it. That the demon of religion can come and play, come and be in that place, can feel welcome. Stress, anxiety can feel welcome because that demon is honored by these five people. Greediness of just, oh, I'm going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, tomorrow we're going to do that, we're going to work there, we're going And then the writer of the book says, how foolish. Instead, you're supposed to say, if the Lord wills, and if God's guidance takes us there, then we will do it, and then do it, and then do it. But we can come together on a platform of a lot of vision and a lot of ideas. But God is not really, God is ignored on that platform. On that platform, it's not like God will have the final say. It's not like God can give his input. It's not like God has a turn to speak in that meeting. And we're okay because we've established that platform. Everybody's okay that he doesn't speak on that platform because that's where we speak this. Or that's where we talk this. That's where we talk about those guys. That's where we... Or I say, God, I need you to help me. That Zion is established in me. Platform where only God is on it. And on that platform where it's only his honor, only him is worship, only it's he and the praise unto him, that there he will establish the eternal city where God will live among the nations. That will be his home. Not heaven, but the nations will be his home. But get that right in your life by building the wall with a word so that you know this is not this is from heaven, this is from hell. In me, that thing is lit up from hell. This side is from the fire of the Holy Spirit. This is the fire of destruction. And I deal with the sides. Then I can choose. But if I don't know, where is the wall? Where is it supposed to be? I'm just in confusion. We're going to get to that word confusion. Okay, so there we go. Nehemiah 4. When Zanbalat, San Sanbalat, heard, when the enemy in your life, when the enemy in your life heard that we were rebuilding the wall, if the enemy would hear that you are trying not to compromise anymore, but to draw the line with a word, the enemy is going to be excited. He became angry and was greatly incensed he ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates and the army he said what are those feeble Jews doing 
What are you trying to do, you pathetic human being? That's what the enemy, as soon as you want to draw the line and build accurately, from where is me and God, and we live and we dwell together, and is me and God on a mission. As soon as you want to try, try and draw the lines, the enemy is awake. He's aware of it. And he said, no, who do you think you are? Immediately, let's attack his identity. Let's attack his performance. Come on, man, you're pathetic. In that concept, I want to put that word in that. Will they restore the wall? How will be your performance? Will they offer sacrifices? How will you offer it? Bring an offer acceptable unto the Lord. First of all, you're pathetic, man. Secondly, you will not be able to do it. You will not be successful. Thirdly, you cannot bring really something that is acceptable before the Lord. Will they finish in a day? You don't have the time. You don't have the time to do all of that. This is all the words, sentences and the words from hell. Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble? Can they? The enemy tell you, come on, look at your circumstances. Look at your resources. Look at your gifting. Look at your skills. You will not be able to do it. Come on, let's get back to reality. So that's all the things the enemy will throw at you as soon as you decide, I'm going to build this wall. Where it's me and God living, dwelling together. Me and God walking together. And it's me and God on a mission. And I will not be in confusion the whole time. Or where it's supposed to work. And I'm supposed to dwell with him. But there's devils. Or... Okay. You hear what I'm saying? There's heaps of rubble. How can you take rubble and build a wall with it? Come on, man. Maybe five loaves of bread, two fish. That's the excuse. So the enemy will tell you, you don't have all the raw resources. And what you have to build with, no. Come on, man. How many times we can have the excuse, I don't have that, and I don't have that, and I don't have money for this, or I don't have that. I don't have the people. I don't. That's why I cannot. If God has said it there, it's not a cannot. With God, all things are possible. Amen? But if I look at the rubble, if I look at the heap of resources that I have, and it looks like rubble, then I've decided that the voice of God will not count. I will not build with, with God, all things are possible. I will not build the wall with that truth. With God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. But that one is, greater is he that is in me, that is in Jerusalem, than he who is in the world. And that scripture starts to make sense. Those who are for us, and those who are against us. Hello? And if God is for us, and from that place I come, who can be against us out there? When you're out there on a mission. And in your heart, from your spirit, from your spirit, there the new Jerusalem is built. From your spirit, the fullness of God dwells in your spirit. The God is dwelling in your spirit. Your spirit is perfect. But you better let your spirit mature by getting into the word. Mature so that you're, from your spirit you are calling the shots to your soul and telling your emotions, telling your thoughts, telling your uh, mindsets. Telling your personality, telling your fears, your, your anxieties, your successes, your failures. Telling all those stuff, tuning all those stuff from the mind of Christ in your spirit. Because God is living there. From that place, you've drawn the line so that you know what in your flesh. Is your flesh crying out to the living God? There's a scripture like that in the Psalms. Oh, I thought my flesh, I must just deal with the flesh. I must not walk in the flesh. I must hate my flesh. No, there's a piece of flesh in me where my flesh is supposed to cry out to the living God. But how to get that flesh in line, man? I need to find myself in the place of peace where there's a harmony for habitation. 
habitation of peace. Harmony between you and God is established from your spirit into your soul, into the rest of your life. Where there's harmony between you and God. Habitation of peace. It's called the New Jerusalem. Amen. Are you still with me, please? Okay. Then, all these enemies said, what they are building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Just let any circumstance come. You make a decision today. You make a decision in prayer tonight. You make a decision when you have the word. You make a decision and the enemy says, oh, come on, man. You just walk out here. I just bring this type of irritation. I just let one person talk behind your back about you. I let, just let one person be rude to you. I just let you get this nasty thoughts again. It's over. The wall is off. The wall is over. It's gone. What you tried to build while you sat here. Now, now, you are building a wall or you're just ignoring it. Now, you're building with compromise while we are sitting here. A wall that I can hear the word of God, but I can just argue with a religious demon about the word. And I build that religious thing. Or I sit here and I just feel condemned and I built, built with a spirit of condemnation. How can you? You will never make it. You will always fail. And that is the wall that I built, that I built. Or I take the word and say, Holy Spirit, how must I interpret it? How must I apply it in my life? And maybe the Holy Spirit will tell you to write something down so that you will practically understand how to apply it tomorrow. And don't waste time sitting here. But build the walls. Amen. Okay. Then, what can you do, man? But what did they do? They prayed. They prayed. They started... They started to work, but all these thoughts, all these onslaughts came. Why the enemy will bring that? Because he knows you can be a threat. As soon as you want to draw the line, as soon as you want to build the wall, he will try his best. Hear us, O God, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. But they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuild the wall still. So we rebuild the wall till all of it reached half its height already. For the people, why? Why? For the people worked with all their heart. You can work here on the farm. You can work in your business. You can do a job. Can somebody else not do this job? Why must I do this? You can stay in that pathetic way of thinking. Or you can do, decide, I do this as if unto the Lord. Maybe two must still take out some weeds on the farm. Maybe you must come uh, and uh, take a day off or for three hours on a Saturday and some, pull out some weeds and say, God, this is this thing in my life, that thing, that thing. Go in Jesus' name. Your strength, your, you will not feed on me anymore. You will just die. Are you with me? Okay, you sound very excited about that one. We rebuilt the world, and it happened because we worked with all our hearts. When you can do it with all your heart, as if unto the Lord, you can only do it if you do it as if unto the Lord. I want to understand the place where I and the Lord can dwell together, can be together, can walk together. I need to understand that with me and my God. I need to understand where He sent me out on a mission. So it's all about him. It's all about him. So my heart is with him. That's why I will build a wall with him, with his word. I don't want to waste my time here on earth. There will be a dividing wall when you go into eternity through death. But today there can be the death of my flesh so that my, the new life in me can rise up. And that is drawing the line, drawing the line, building, building. Amen. Okay, when all these guys, when they heard that the, the repairs of the walls had gone ahead 
and that the gaps are being closed, the places of compromise in my life, your life. They were very angry. Why will the enemy get angry? Because he knows he's going to lose. He's going to lose. He cannot get you for eternity. You're going to heaven. He's going to go to hell. But at least he can make, bring hell to you here on earth as much as possible. But his agenda cannot work if you, if you go and decide that I will draw the line with no compromise anymore. You with me? They all plotted together. So the enemy makes sure that he will have a strategic plan against you. And we will fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble in it. And stir up trouble. So that there will be trouble. Trouble, trouble, trouble. In some of the translations talking about so that there will be a confusion. So that there will be a confusion. So they believe, the enemy believes, that in their strategy, whatever demons, demons must decide together, wow! Good morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they can decide together, hello? How will we win? We will win if we can cause trouble among them. Well, the other translations are confusion. So the enemy doesn't think he's going to win when they've slaughtered everybody. When the enemy understands that he brought confusion in your life, he can walk away because you're going to destroy yourself. He can walk away because you're going to destroy yourself when you stay in a confusion. Because you don't know what's the world, what's the church, what's from God, what's not from God. And there's no walls giving you the difference. There's a snake that can tell you what is from good, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the snake can tell you where do you draw the line. But the word says through his word and the spirit, you will understand. He will show you that what is good, that is from God, and that what looks good, but is from hell. May God help us. Amen. Okay. They got really angry. They all plotted together to stir up trouble. But we, everybody say, but we. But we. Once again. Once, but we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. We're going to have Friday evening once again, watch and pray, watch and pray, watch and pray. What did they do when the enemy came in like a flood, when the enemy were angry and strategically the enemy has a strategy against you. What strategy do you have? Hell can have a master plan against you. Strategic plan. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to do this and that and that. We will come in and then this is the way that we're going to bring confusion. We're going to be in trouble so that they have issues the whole time with one another. Then we can walk away. They will slaughter one another. Enemy come with a strategic plan. What is your strategic plan from heaven that you have for your life? Your strategic plan, the strategic word that God has given you in your finances. This is greediness. This is God providing. This is sowing in the name of the Lord. This is performance to manipulate the word so that you can get something. And you know the difference, you know the difference because you get a word from God about every facet of your life. You get a word about finances and God, you show you something and she's woo, and you repent and you deal with this. God, how must I not just repent, how must I deal with this fear about uh, God's provision? And then you take that scripture, you speak that scripture, you believe that scripture and you turn and you clearer, 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 you start to understand the dividing line. Here I'm building the wall. And that voices, those enemy, those guys, they cannot enter. I don't have to fight them. Why? Because there's a wall. And the wall is built accurately with the word of God. And so we are fighting some enemies in our lives. Guys, only because we didn't build the wall. Now I don't have a life 
in this place with God, in walking with Him, in being with Him, and enjoying where life is Christ and die is gain. And so much of His dream for my life I miss because I must the whole time fight the enemy that is jumping over some Waramampara wall. Okay, that's the rest of your life till you die and then you go to heaven. But you know, you know, in heaven you will know, if I just build the wall with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, this is from Him, this is not from Him. Is it not the Word and other picture that is like the two-edged sword that dividing what is from Spirit, what is from soul? Same picture, just in a different way, set. Please, guys, let's not waste our energy, our time, our thoughts, the, all the walls in here, walls in there. Such a lot can just become still. To have a life and not fight for a life. What about let's get a life? Amen. Tell your neighbor, build the wall. If you think he's not going to do it, just smack him. Okay, well, we posted a guard day and night to meet the threat. Meanwhile, the people in Jerusalem said, the strength of the laborers are, is giving out, and there is too much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Too much rubble. Too much rubble in your life. Too much issues. Too much fr flesh. Too much rubbles. Too easily swayed into, into things that are not from God. Too much compromise, too much just hearing the word but doing nothing about it. Too much rubble. And I am tired because of the amount of rubble. Ask God, what? Must I find the stones among this rubble? Must I clean these stones and build with it? Or what must I do with this? But don't focus on that. See the potential of what is among the rubble that I can use. God, in the rubble of my life, there's some stones you want to clean up where the enemy says, how do you think you will bring life into those stones to build with it? There will never be life in that area of your life. That's rubbish. <laughs> there's difference between the rubble and the rubbish. Let's say rubbish and rubble. Now separate the rubbish from the rubble, okay, and to answer that you can understand what must be thrown away and what is stones that the enemy say, you cannot build with that. And you say, I will do because with my God all things are possible. I will build that wall in my life. I will not be a man of compromise. I will have a life with God. I will not fight for a life and just the whole time need to deal with the issues of life. Christ died so that I can have a life even here on earth. And why are you still alive? Why are you not dead, man, in heaven? Because on the one side, God has a mandate for you to reach people. So you are in that job. You are having that relationship. You're walking through that pick and pay. You're walking through that shop because there's somebody that you're supposed to say something to. Not just so that you can get bread and butter. But there's an agenda. But here with God, He wants to walk with you here in a certain way. In heaven for eternity, He will be with you in a certain way. And in that way there, it's like you will see the fullness. You cannot but worship. You cannot but love. You cannot. And there's not an offering to be made. Because you want to, want to, want to, want to all the time. But there's a way that He still wants to walk with you here on earth. And in that way, it's God, in spite of what I feel, God, in spite of what I'm going through, I love you. In spite of what I experience, I'm just saying you are everything in my life. You cannot walk in that way with God in heaven. You cannot walk for eternity, not even a second of eternity. You cannot walk with God in that way. But he decided he wants to walk with you in that way tomorrow. Where he believes, he will say, that you will say, God, I need you. You need to walk with faith. God, I need faith in this area. I need your word to understand how to do this. When you feel 
disturbed, when you feel frustrated, when you feel irritated, when you feel down, when you feel tired. How are you walking and how will you walk with God? Because he has a desire to walk with you in a certain way tomorrow that he cannot do with you for eternity. But he can only walk with you in that way while you're here on earth. See God's desire and don't miss the opportunities that you have here that you will never, ever, ever, ever have for the whole of eternity. Never have again. Okay. They prayed. They put out all of this. Okay. Also the enemy said, said to who? They said to one another, man. The enemy, the demons speak to one another about you. Just like God, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit spoke to one another and said, let us make Mary. Let us make Leander. He will be very interesting, but let's make him in any case. Something like that. So, are you with me? Just like God spoke to himself, the devil, the demons, they speak to one another. Let us do that in Henry's life. Also, the enemy said, before they know it, before they know it, or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. When will you really see destruction? When will you really see destructive death? Is if the enemy can come among us, enemy can come in your relationships, come, come in your life without you realizing it. You thought this stuff is still okay. To do this stuff is still okay. To talk like this to one another is still okay. To have this type of jokes is still okay. To, to entertain certain thoughts, uh, thoughts is still okay. And without you realizing it, this part of this strategy, this strategy was, they will not, as long as we can get in without them realizing we are there, we are okay. But you're supposed to have a dividing wall. Hello. So that the enemy cannot come through unless he break down. And then you will be aware of it. But if it's the wall not built, you, can, you don't even realize somebody jumped there. Or just somebody walked there. You know? In a very interesting way. Just walked through. Are you with me? 49 years ago, I was in the army. And then on a Sunday, I said, but I want to go to church. And they don't allow me to go to church. And I said, no, that's not going to, you, you don't do it today. But okay, Niman, nobody is in the army in any case. But uh, so we don't get a pass. And there's some guys that are just nasty, not giving, my nickname was Dormini, not giving Dormini a pass to go to church. So then I said, God, I'm trusting you. So I'm just walking like up straight <laughs> and uh, just greeting the corporal and the lieutenant there at the gate where you must sign out, sign in, watch, where's your pass, where's the things for you. Said, corporal, good day, Dominic. I just walk out through and then I stand on the road, get a lift and go to Kimberley in the city, go to church. <laughs> okay. Okay, I confess it as a sin, it seems to me. You look at me like that. What on earth did I want to say with that, in any case, except for confession? But all I'm, all I'm saying is, don't take no for an excuse. Are you with me? They knew it was me. They said, hello, Dominic. and see you later. Okay. Don't judge me now, please. Okay. Okay, so where are we now? The enemy said, before they know it or see us, you don't even see the enemy, you don't know he's there. If we are there among them, then we can put an end to this work. Then we can put an end to what God has in store for you. If they can just get into your head, get into your heart, get into your emotions, get into your relationships, get in there then you will don't even realize that you are missing out on what God has for you. Then the Jews, 
who lived near them, came to us, told us, whether you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, Nehemiah said, we will station some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall where they can jump over at the exposed places, posting them, my families, with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. You can stand in the gap for your whole family, for your children, your grandchildren, your parents. You can stand in the gap for a lot of people. But you can be in the right place. You can be posted there with your sword and all your, your spear, your bows, everything. But if you don't understand the greatness of your God, you will still fear. He said, you have all this stuff. Remember you have your bow and your sword and everything and you're stationed in the right place. God gave us the right strategy. No. Don't be afraid of them because you remember the Lord who is great and awesome. If you can understand the greatness of your God, the awesomeness of your God, not the greatness of your problems and your issues and your temptations, but the greatness of your God, you've won the fight. Just like the enemy. See, if, if we can bring confusion, we've won the fight. If we can enter without them realizing we've entered, we've won the fight. So Nehemiah says, if you know the greatness of your God, then we've won the fight. If you just know the greatness of your God, you've won the fight. David Goliath, is, there's not this fight. There's not this fight. But David knows the greatness of his God. How dare you come against us? We have a covenant with this great, awesome God. You come with your spear and all these stuff. Is, I, my translation. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Because he saw and he remembered the greatness of his God in the testimony of a, a lion and a bear. Not lying with a beer. <laughs> Titan. <laughs> Lion and a <the> bear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Are you with one another? Don't be afraid because you're going to remember the greatness of your God. Now get into the way. Understand the greatness of your God. You build that wall. And fear is out, you are in. You are in love that drives out all fear. But when you've built the wall, you understand with love in, fear must go. Build that wall. Okay. Then, when our enemies heard, when the enemy heard that we were aware of their plots and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to, to the wall. We returned to the wall, and the enemy left. You can get on with the work of God in your life. They came, and they, he just said, they want to come and fight and bring confusion. But when they heard that God is fighting for them, and God is bringing confusion about between us, they left, just went home. They didn't find another strategy. They just left. When they heard that you are getting into a place of understanding the greatness of your God, you're finding His strategy, and you are going with your whole heart in the work. They just gave up. They just gave up and went home. Come on, man. There's fights that we are involved with that God never planned for us to be involved with. Draw the line. Everybody say, draw the line. Draw the line. Okay, when you do it with the Holy Spirit and the Word. Okay. All right, God had frustrated it. Then they returned. Us to the walk and the enemy back home. From that day on, half of my men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried the material did their work with their own hand and held their weapon in the other. Okay, so there's two. There's some guys that must work very hard. They must work very hard. They must work very hard. While well, some other guys must just stand there with a spear. You work very hard? Ha ha. Anybody saw that? 
when you work very hard and you are tired and you see people that did nothing. And according to you, they were supposed to do a lot of stuff and they didn't do it and you had to do everything. Then you just start to pray for them. Amen. No. Some other people, not you, but some other people would, in such a situation, sometimes try to get irritated with those guys, get frustrated with those guys, could feel, you know, I'm giving myself. But these guys just walk over me, they just give me all the job and then, well, see what they are doing. We need to understand God's strategy, who's supposed to do what, who's supposed to be what, do what. There's some guys that must stand and watch in that sense. There's a watching, there's a working, and there's a praying. Amen. Different mandates, but all necessary. Because you can work very hard, work very hard, but if that guy is not focusing, the enemy can come and what you've built in that whole 10 years just, boom, break it down. But if that guy is watching, He's for your protection so that that what you are building will stand. And that's many times a mama, a grandma praying, praying, praying on that wall, praying. Why is she always just praying? You know, don't despise. Respect. Are you with me? Because without that mama's prayer, you could have been destroyed maybe long, 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 long ago. You have respect for them. Are you with me? Phone somebody and thank them. If you think they didn't pray for you, phone them, thank them that they prayed, and then they feel guilty and start to pray. <laughs> I don't know if that's godly strategy, but find strategy that you have people that will be praying for you. Amen. Okay, okay. And then you have the guys with the one in the one hand, the sword, and in the other hand, that what they must work with. And that is in your life, in your life. Don't get so intense in your work that you let the sword fall. When you become really tired, and you are tired, you feel you are, you are tired with all the work, that you, that's when you can get really vulnerable for the enemy to come. Or when you're really busy, you're supposed to understand how to be busy, but also be alert in your spirit for what Holy Spirit will say. So that you will work, but just up to here. And then finish. Even in the midst of success, you work and you work with success, but suddenly the success is the voice and not Holy Spirit is the voice anymore. Oh, be aware, be aware what is going to be from God, what is going to be from the enemy. In one place, it was a time of a lot of, lot of breakthroughs and a lot of guys were delivered from a lot of demons. And, uh, and some people there in Kimberley talked even about, oh, there's revival in that camp. And uh, so Domini would pray and there would be a lot of manifestations and things happen. So I just carry on and there's one guy and I prayed for him and there's some other type of manifestation. And... And the next moment, he looked at me and he walked out. And from that moment, I couldn't breathe. And I was like, <sighs> he just looked at me and he walked out and I couldn't breathe. <sighs> now, this is a man of power for the hour at that stage with more than a hundred gave their lives to Christ and demons went out and a lot of things happened. And and the moment I cannot, and I, and I called two churches and said, now you must pray. I realize this is something spiritual. And then I realized the Holy Spirit showing me, I just went on the voice of success. Don't lay on hands hastily, the word says. And in the name of success, I, do, I mean, things are just happening there. And uh, just praying, praying. And, but the most amazing thing, guys, the most amazing thing, don't tell me where is your scripture. The most amazing thing, I would like, and when I would pray in tongues, 
<laughs> I got such a shocking revelation of the power of tongues. And then I was praying tongues, and and I breathe normally. And I stopped praying in tongues. <sighs> I couldn't believe it. It was such a shock, the awesome power of praying in tongues. But I couldn't sleep the whole night. And the next day, and at one stage, I took, called the church and I was crying. I said, I cannot take this anymore. I don't know what to do. So, I mean, you were trying to chase the devil out and whatever. I confessed what I did wrong and I said, God, uh, now what now? And that evening I even said, God, so if this is the end, just take me or whatever. Not out of a tantrum, but of, I don't know. We're going for the second night. I'm not sleeping again, not the one second. And I started just to pray in tongues. And in the next moment, I woke up five, six hours later. And it was gone. And later when I came to a Satanist and I spoke to him, at one stage I said to him, did you guys send somebody to me? And he laughed and he said, yes. He said, yes. If the enemy doesn't like what you do, he will have strategies. He will have his strategy worked out. Me, stupidioleus. I don't know if he finds such a word, but and in that moment, not according to the word, stay dependent on God. But just go with the voice of success and boom. This thing is on me. Praise God for His grace. He's bringing restoration and that what was actually a failure turned into a testimony. But you, you are still here. We're going to finish now. Just, just be strong. Okay. Okay. Uh, then, verse 19. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out. And we are widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you, whenever, wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. But you need to understand the trumpet. If somebody make like a trumpet. It sounds like a cow with constipation. Anybody? Asabliff. Yeah. Then nobody will come if the trumpet blows like that. Widely separated. Guys, we can suddenly be so busy in our work that we are separated with, from one another because maybe there's a lot of work that must be done and we live past one another. My wife called it, no, we are just like glorified flatmates, you know, and not really connected, husband and wife. And we can be so separated, like the scripture says, from one another because we are busy with the work. But you need to understand the trumpet call. When you suddenly must, it wasn't a time, it wasn't organized like that. You know, the program didn't say that. But when the trumpet call is there, not the one day when God's coming to, to get us, but when there's an urgency in the spirit and there's a call that we must be together, or we must work differently, or we must do certain things differently, God's going to raise up a church that's willing to have that type of mature reaction towards one another. That everybody is busy. No, I'm just finishing off this. No, I'm just busy with this. I must just finish this. The work is not the excuse to respond to the trumpet call. Because it can, you can, you, it can ruin your life. That, that own mindset of me and my thing. My, me and this. You have a, a part of the wall. That's it. But all together. That part of the wall can be very, very, very excellently built. And then this part, pathetically. And the enemy will just come through. The crack will be there, the enemy will see, the enemy will come through. We need one another. The world is not you and you alone. Have, Jerusalem is for a people. It's for a people. Amen. Holy Spirit is in you with an agenda. But God's going to be with us as a home. 
You are still here. For God will fight for us. So we continued the work. We had the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. Okay. All right, I want to just cut it there. So all I'm saying is, my brother, if you can understand how not to waste your life here on earth by building the walls so that on the inside is the new Jerusalem established, but you know, established on Mount Zion. The, the word, I said that or not? We talked about that, no. So on the platform of, of Mount Zion, Jerusalem will be established. Amen. So build that platform. Make sure that platform is built in your life. That I will honor him, I will praise him, doesn't matter what. And I will walk with him in a way that I will for eternity not be able to walk with him. And that is in spite of what I feel. In spite of the fact that I feel I'm going to kill that guy. I will love him, I will forgive him because I honor God. You forgive that guy, why? Because he, he changed his ways. You forgive that guy because you could speak to him. That's the biggest rubbish. Stop being deceived. You forgive that guy because you decide to respect the word of God. You forgive that guy because your God said he must forgive. Not be, because that guy asked for forgiveness. Maybe he doesn't even ask for forgiveness. He's just mocking you. He can do whatever. He did that a hundred times towards you. And every time a promise that he will never do it again. But you forgive him because you honor God. You honor the word because you walk with God first of all before you walk with that person. And because you want your walk with God is precious to you. And because you respect the word and you've drawn the line in your life. You forgive because in this place, in that what will be called the New Jerusalem, this is the, the wall of Jerusalem, in this place where you walk with God, where you dwell with Him, where you, it's your home to be with Him, in this place, unforgiveness cannot be. That's the only reason why you forgive Him. Why you forgive her. Why you forgive your parents, your children, whoever, your leaders, the guys following you, that student, whoever. Because you decide, you, I want to walk in a certain way with God here. That for the next trillion, trillion light years, I will not be able to walk with God in that way. But here I can walk with Him in that way. And I take His hand and say, I walk into the place of grace, forgiveness through the blood. Have mercy on people. Respect what God has done through the cross in their lives. And that is how I walk by faith. And God is pleased how I walk by faith with Him. Choose that type of walk with God here on earth. Because you only have this opportunity for this time. Till you pass into the next level. You have only this opportunity now. God, come and help us. We need you, Lord. God, I pray that we will see and understand the opportunity, the privilege we have to walk with you in a unique way here on earth. God, even for our flesh, and selfish ideas and selfish desire, a selfish desire to entertain our justifications, to entertain our own thoughts of, of how we are right and somebody else is wrong or whatever of that, Lord. God, we walk away from that in the name of Jesus Christ. Come and set us free. God, and even if we have now as we have communion, we, we say we draw the line first of all through the blood of Christ. We say, Satan, the blood of Christ is against you. God, I pray that we will be protected through the blood. Protected through the blood. And in that place of protection, we are not protected because we are perfect. We are protected because we are covered with the blood of the one that is perfect. We thank you for that honor, that privilege. And as we partake in communion, that we will understand this principle afresh. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're a child of God, you know your life is right with Him. There's not issues with somebody. Please, you are free to partake in the communion with us. But I say today in the Spirit, draw the line through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of Christ, draw the line and say, I will build the wall based on the blood of Christ. My brother, my sister, the one Satanist priest that gave his life to Christ, 
he, he saw this medium, he had this interaction with this demonic force, and he told me the next day after he was delivered, he said he saw that medium around his, his bed, and he was looking at the thing. But the, and I had fear, but still he could not come close. He could not come close, the demonic force. And immediately, I just, it just came in my spirit. It was the blood. That's a chicken, not a child, hey? And immediately, I just knew, this guy that was a Satanist priest, and the next morning, that demonic force thought, how will I enter? How will I come close? And he just came to me blood of Christ is over that man. You are protected by the blood of Christ, my brother, my sister. You are protected by the blood of the perfect, perfect, perfect sacrifice of the Lamb of God. Appreciate that. Honor that. Respect the blood, even as you partake this morning. Okay?